Okay. He only talked about is building oscilloscope probes at home with stuff you can find around the house. And you probably have to buy some stuff as well if you're going to make it into times 10. And you might have to buy an adapter because this here is just going to use something so you don't have to buy the expensive coax cord. We're going to use something simple you can find around the house that's coax. Here's what we're going to use. See if I can get We're going to use this here type cord. It's, it's a, it uses the F jack. This is F jack cord that that goes to this adapter here that converts it to BNC. BNC male to F jack female adapter is what you'll need so you can it's basically used they they use this type of adapter in security cameras just in case it's not security cameras would use would use the BNC connector also an antenna connectors, ham radio and stuff. You'd be able to find this at we. Uh, you'd be able to find this at a ham fest as well. If you went to a ham fest, you'd be able to find this adapter because it's more widely used in ham radio stuff. But what we're going to use it for is to, to to convert the end to this F jack end. An F jack end will look like this. I'm going to screw it for a minute. Take it off here. You probably seen this on the back of a TV. And this is what the whole thing is. What we're going to use is this here. This coax cord, 75 ohms impedance, I think that's what they call it, is it impedance? I think so. This is RJ, RG6 cord. You want to make sure you have 6 foot or less of it. Now, the resistors don't have to be what I am using now, they don't have to use 5 resistors. You could, if you, if you don't really care about precision, you could probably go down to 5.1 meg at the, at the top resistor, make this instead of using 3 here, use 1 5.1 meg. And then maybe down here, instead of using these two, or if you want to use these two, leave them there. And then also, or if you wanted to, you could put 1.2 meg, which is close to 1.25, which you add up to. Because in series, all the resistors add up. As you'll see, they add up in series. In parallel, they 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 decrease by the number of. Well, it's hard to explain, but it is is total total the reciprocals of the resistors in series. Not in series in parallel, I mean. Then we still call that we are total, but we're not gonna go over that. You 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 can look that up on their series resistors and parallel resistors on the internet. They'll tell you more about that. You know what the math is behind it. But if you put them in series, like I just did. In fact, you could probably take since 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 you know this ten meg is like five meg double. You get a ten meg here. And put two of them in parallel, it'll divide it in half and make it five meg. But I don't know about the one, they probably have to use 1.1 1 .1 and 150k there. I decided to use 350k's because, because I didn't want to have to keep buying resistors. I just wanted to use the same resistor that I had to make up for it. And then, and, and, and 4 and 4.7 plus 0.3 is 5. Since, since, since kilo ohms is 100, since 300 is, 300k is 100, is 300, 300 meg, it'll add up to 5 meg. Anyway, want to go over how to test this cord and see if you got your probe working. Now, I don't have a 5 meg, not 5 meg, a 10 meg ohm impedance meter, but I have a 1 meg ohm meter. But what we're going to do, we won't measure, measure its voltage on here. What we're going to do is we're going to measure its, its resistance. We're going to measure two parts of the resistance. We're going to measure between 
the tip here and where is it? The grand clip. And we should get we should get this resistor here, the two here too, plus that. So there should be 1.25 plus 5. That should be 6.25. If you get 5 volts, 5 mega ohms, then you have a problem. Because it should not come around the 5 mega ohms. Because that means you have a short in it. Even though it sounds like it's close close to 6, it's not. It, it's basically because you got to short it out your... You short out this resistor here. The, these here. And then, then they don't add up and then they can cause a problem. I decided that I wanted to make mine accurate as possible. And, and the way I did it is probably you don't want to do it this way. I did it by taking one of these pins that, that don't have the tip removal. As you can see here, you probably know because this company, this brand name is Pentel RSVP Fine BK90 pin is doesn't have the tip removal, but the cap can come off, which you can take the ink out and then you can put this through it. Well, then we're going to go also over the one times one probe as well. The times one probe is very simple and easy. You just feed through the coax to it and, and then connect the clip to the ground and that's it. There's nothing that goes in there. No components you need to buy. In fact, if you were going to make that at home with, with, just, with just a simple cheap coax where you have, you could probably save lots and lots of money because you don't have to buy a cord. You may have to buy the BNC to F jack adapter, F jack to BNC, I mean, adapter. But hey, that's not that expensive. It's probably a dollar or so we get to find it. And that's how we're going to do it. So first I'm going to find my way to put that thing. I'm going to cut it back up to here because it makes it a lot easier testing with. It's when I have my BNC connector hooked to the F jack. F jack was 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 used. It's used on TVs for antennas, but 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 you probably have a cord laying around. If you have an antenna, you have a TV that has coax cord, and you know you don't use it no more. You could probably use that one as long as it's less than six foot, six foot or less. I mean, if it goes over six foot, I don't know. I was I'm doing a space off of another. Probe which uses a BNC at that end on it, and they and the guy said use two meters, which is should be around six foot at least. That's according to what Google gave me when I inputted it in to there. I see what tell me because I didn't know because I know my my measuring tape can only go in feet, not meters. So I had to convert it to that and come around six foot or so. So this is what we're gonna do. So let's try testing out the 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 resistances on those points there and see if I'm correct on it. Okay, I got my meter over here hooked up, turned on. I got my probe here. I haven't hooked up the other end. That's why it's infinity shown. The one over here with nothing on this side means it's infinity resistant or it's going too high. To measure. So I'm going to hook up the other the tip. I got the alligator clip on there. As you can see down there, it's connected to the ground on this coax cord. And if I connect it to the tip, as you can see, it starts going down, 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 down. So it's going to stop pretty soon. So six point something. Yeah, six point sixteen. 
it, well, it doesn't work. It's going to be like that. It's going to be off a little bit. But as long as it's hiding six, you're probably good to go. Now, if it was five or something, five point something, you definitely know there's the, the something wrong in this chord because it should. That means that your, your middle resistor that goes between the output of ground and put a ground, I mean, is shorted. And it doesn't, and it's not using the resistance that's there. To go in series of it, it's just going through your tip and using that. And that's what, what we want. The next thing to do to test it is what we're going to do is I'm going to leave it connected to. We'll do three different tests on this one. We're gonna, since I want to leave it connected to the, the I'll get connected to the ground, I'm going to test if that first goes to the ground. To do that, you want to make sure you go to the ocean resistance setting. So I'm going to go to the 200 ohms. So it gets the lowest resistance reading. And when I hit the, the ground, the, the, the ground part, which is the metal around this thing, around the connector, to, to the web lead. And it should go to zero. If I can get this cord to cooperate with me. And where you know, it goes to zero or one, but that could be because of the cord's resistance and these, these wires on these multimeters and stuff. That should be good. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna te test it between, between the alligator clip there and the middle pin. Now this is gonna be hard for me to do with the camera. Because you gotta hit the middle pin that's inside it. That's where the signal will come in. And it should give me uh, oh, oh yeah, and don't forget to change back your beta resistance to the highest one of all the twenty meg setting. Or something that could read no wait a minute, one meg. Two meg ohms will do. Yeah. Two megs if you can. If there's one meg setting and it does go to two meg, go to the next one up. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this probe here. I'm gonna hit this, touch the center pin. And what do you know? 1,243. No, it's 2,024. A thousand twenty three no no it's a thousand two hundred and thirty seven kil ohms which is around close to two point five mega ohms one and a quarter mega ohm and that's how it works and if you don't believe me we'll go to the oscilloscope and we'll try it on that one and we'll try putting a ten volt into it and see if we get a one volt on on the one volt per division, see if we get to, get to line stand on one square. Let's go ahead and do that right now. Okay, got the probe hooked up to this wooden power supply of mine that I built a long time ago. Anyway, it's set to 10.03 volts. It's not drawing any current at all. It probably is, but it's but but it's so low because of the resistance being being a uh, five meg at least. It's going to be pretty low. Now, if you look down here at the oscilloscope, I have it on channel 2, 1 volt per division. When you look at the oscilloscope screen, as you can see there, it's 1 volt. Uh, let's try turning it down to 5 or 6. Go the other way. At six, it's a little bit off. It could be the tolerance of the resistors are coming in play, causing it to be divided by more. Or so, I 
but you get but you get the handle of it. And if we go down to where's five. Got it at five. Well, of course it's gonna be there, but Yeah, now at point five, it's it's at there. Yeah, it'll only be there if you do my double of that, five twenty or so. It'll go down to there, but since we're at five, it goes up a little. Since we're at point five, which is which was ten divided by five divided by ten point five, half or half a volt or so. So if we put it on half a volt per division. Now we get that. So, so I wasn't messing up at all. I was just, I was just looking at it wrong. Anyway, there you go. Times ten, and this will work with almost any oscilloscope because I don't know about high frequency stuff, but this will probably do deal with your projects that you that do it yourself to use or hobbyists to do. And this would help them with the circuits. A times 10 probe helps by eliminating interference and stuff because it divides it out somehow. I'm not for sure how they do it, but they say a times 10 is better, so it can be sometimes better than times 1. Of course, you can get in a situation where times 10 is terrible in times 1, and you'd have to use times 1 then. But hey, it would be nice to have a times 10 probes with it. And this is a, this is what it does. And it's really cheap. There, there's no calibration that needs to be done in it. Or of course there could be if you wanted to get, get it accurate as 1% tolerance or so. You, 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 you could probably put it aboard in there and put a tiny pot and then trim it down to the correct resistance that measures up on a professional meter or so. And that there will calibrate it for you. Then you want to see times one? We'll go over to times one probe now. And also, if you look inside this here, you can see this, see it, my paper clip I soldered onto it is right in there. Then you see that black stuff? That's the uh, the black tube thingy. Black piece right there, that's electric tape surrounding the resistance. So if it did push back in there, I didn't want the resistance to short out and bypass each other. So I put black, black electric tape around it. It was hard putting it in there with electric tape around it. It was hard doing it with these resistors. It probably would have been more easier if I... I don't know. I don't know if it would be easier or not if I did it with the, the, the pen that could have a tip... Removed off of it. Anyway, anyway, the the probe does work, and. Probe works in this, and it does work. I don't know if we, if I, I don't know if you should put copper tape around it if that would help. If there's any interference, I don't know. I haven't got any interference with it because I even hooked up a. Once see once see hooked up to a sine wave, we can unhook this and this. I'm just gonna probe it to that one there. And inside the oscilloscope, there's a there's a component tester function which has a 60 hertz probably a power transformer that that's operates as a curve tracer that wins all the time there's a oscilloscope's power one let's put it provided by that and see if we get a sine wave and of course it's and well you know a sine wave let's see
Yeah, so how come I ground down there? There's a sine wave. And it works. Now let's go on to 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 the time one probe and see how that's going to work out. Time one, let me get it over here. Is this it? No, it's over there. This is our time times one probe. You can see the construction of it. It was pretty simple and easy. I just put back lots and lots of the cop, the coax cord, and put the the thing right through it. And then in the tip of the wire, actually went right through it. So there's no need for a paper clip for this times one probe because the times one could actually fit through it. Now, if you're making a oscilloscope for like sound card and stuff like that, times one, or well, if you want to put it, well, of course you have to put it to some division, divide it by its stuff. But the thing is, sound cards, their impedances are very, they're not the same. They're meant to just to make sound go through it and stuff like that, practically. And there's no impedance, the, the impedances are different for each one. So probably put a voltage divider against the BNC connected and you have a times one probe like this one here, you would have success of measuring signals. The times one is just basically what connects it directly through. I remember watching this one video from Glass Linger who explained that 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 when it was fixing, what was it, a radio or something? No, it was a TV, I think. That he said he used times 10 probe on it. It's because you're measuring like two voltages and stuff like that. And it's probably when you're measuring the stuff, the tubes, you want know, to make sure you get the higher. I don't know if this so so can do that. I don't know if the tube, the tube voltage might go higher than 400 volts or so with this. Oscilloscope is waited for on the inputs, and a times ten, or even if it, you probably could. If it four hundred, if it was like four hundred, it'll be what, times ten four divided by four hundred. I'll be a high, real high. But anyway, those things they don't have no vote for division. I don't think they'll come out. To ten, not to ten to 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 the exact voltage that will be divided by ten. Because we have get that high, it'll go off the screen here, and that would be an issue. Anyway, I'm not talking about that. I'm going to show you how this works. Here's what the probe looks like. They see here, you got the tip here. The tip here has this gobbus. This is this is the times 10 probe, let's talk about it anyway. I was talking about the times 1 probe earlier, but the thing is the video got chopped off because I didn't, cause I didn't tell it, tell my my phone to have a limit on time at 10 minutes. So I, now I changed it to no, no limit. So now it was just to give us a longer time talking and showing you how it works. Okay? Anyway, there's a god beside her here. There's a god beside her other one, which we'll see in a little bit. Down here, you can see this paper clip is soldered onto the resistor. The resistor, it goes to, I believe, is a 4.7 meg. Then there's two 1K, two, not 1K, 250K resistors, which add up to be 300 in series. And when it's in series with the 4.7 meg, it makes it 5 meg. You could get, uh, 10 meg ones and then put two of them in parallel, but the thing is, it probably won't fit in the case because it will probably be a little too big because they're all bumped because they'll be all on top of each other, making the resistor like a big one.
a little bit bigger, like double times bigger. Anyway, and over here, I got my alligator clip. This come off of a thing I bought from electronics. I bought all the parts of electronics, actually, except for the pen, of course, and the coax cord. The adapter come from electronics. It wasn't that expensive. You can, and I got this, got the pair of alligator clips that come on with a RJ11 or phone jack or telephone cord connector on it with the clip and stuff like that. I just cut the wires off of that and then use, use, uh, use the clips from it to make the probes with. Now, let's talk about the times one probe to show you how it works. See this here? This is very simple and easy as you can see. This here is this coax, the part of the coax going through it, the shield of the coax. Then at the top, there's the bump right there where I put the gob of solder so it couldn't go back through. And there after that is the tip of the probe. This here will be better at RF radio interference by 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 some kind of way because it has less it has less of the tip exposed to to where it's not shielded. And it goes in breadboards as well. These two can go into the breadboards as well, which is exactly what I'm, which actually I'm doing with it. You can use these probes, probes on there to, we recommend you to make a, make a times one and a times ten. Some probes, they have a switch that has like a times one and times ten. I don't know how they do it. Not, I think that would be pretty advanced, pretty tiny circuitry and stuff. Because you'd have to put a tiny switch in the cord and then you'd have to... Then you'd have... Then you'd have to, uh... You'd have to change it from one, one type of circuit to another. Like, turn off the... Voltage right it's probably possible because it could probably put a, a double pole that will throw a slide switch into it, and that might be what they're using. And then it goes between the two, and then it goes between if it's gonna go to the or it could be single pole double throw or, or single throw, single pole, single throw, depending on how the circuit's made. If the circuit's made in a special way where it will, it will, uh. It will not, not use the way I'm doing it. Because the way I'm doing it, the way I've been seeing some of them have, they have a capacitor, a tiny trimmer capacitor, and they only use one resistor. But the thing is, it has to do a lot of calibration with that. And plus also, the, the frequency it has to go with on the oscilloscope is also another thing. Where you just do it this way, it's a lot better. At least for me, I think. And this is basically how it works. And you want to see this times one probe, we just hook it up. I'll get, take it off these. I only got one of these adapters. I should have. I should have got two of them. I have to put the camera down for a second. Okay, I got my times one probe hooked up. As you can see, over there, where the alligator clip on the ground, the this tube, this probe tip here going to the positive five point. What again? Five point five? Yeah, five point five three volts across it. Anyway, if you look at the, get this cord out of the way, this coax off the screen here. There we go. Now go a little bit back so you can see that. And it looks like it's just, oh, I got it on. Did I just disconnect it? Yeah, I did. Hang on.
There we go. Now it's back up and warning. I must have bumped something and it got loose. Because those speaker tones aren't the best. They're good, but they're not. Sometimes they, they don't make connection, good connection and they get loose and stuff. Anyway, we got it on 5 volts per division. It's on. It's on, only on at one square, which means it's 5 volts. Well, close to a 5.53, what it says on the meter over there. And that's how this, how a times one probe works. Times one probe probably works on every oscilloscope you use. And no matter what the frequency it is made for, because basically, this hook just sends signal directly into the BNC jack. Without no, no resistance, no capacitance and stuff like that. Well, it's probably just some capacitance. So those coax does have capacitance on it. Because uh, they're like a circle. And then there's a center. And then and then like the circle could be like one plate. The round part of it could be like one plate of shield. And the center wire acts as another plate. Which then makes some capacitance. But it's not that high. It's in... A few hundred picofarads is what I measured out before I even put it together. Because I wanted to see how much capacitance a, a coax cord could have. I think it come out to be a hundred and so many picofarads I'm, when I measured, measured it. Anyway. And, and if you don't want to don't do it by the times ten. Well, which is sometimes are better because sometimes you don't have to do the math to figure out what the voltage is. Or if you don't have it, or if your oscilloscope is not a 1 meg ohm resistor, there's still a way. I, I don't have a 10 meg oscilloscope because I only have one because oscilloscopes are kind of expensive. And it probably a 10 meg ohm repeating oscilloscope is going to be a lot more expensive than this one would be overall because. Because because of having higher impedances, so the higher the impedances, the less it's going to interfere with your circuit, depending on what you're measuring. Because they go in parallel, and when they go and you have parallel resistances, they go down, and that can interfere with the circuit. But for one meg on there, usually that don't really bother it, because your circuit will usually be be between hundreds of kilohms to. 1K or so, and that doesn't hardly bother the circuit at all because it'll go down, it'll go down a little, but not that much. And there you go a circuit that you can build with just TV coax cord that you have, maybe you have extra coax cord that, that, that you have laying around, or you can you it doesn't have to be TV coax. You have BNC coax. Go for that because then because then you don't have to don't have to get the adapter. Then the reason I went and went with the TV coax was because I didn't have to go buy the cord, and I have a whole bunch of them, so I could make a whole bunch of type of cords if I wanted to and sell them. Well, I think that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video. You can check the circuit on my website. It's on there too. The circuit's very simple, simple and easy. It doesn't have to use that resistor pair. As long as the top resistor of that voltage divider, that's what basically what a times 10 is. It's a divide by 10 voltage divider. And it makes it put more, more precise when you take, you don't just make it like times 10 of any ratio of resistors. Make it the ratio of of the oscilloscope repeaters and the bottom resistor of the of the voltage divider. We use the oscilloscope as a load, and the other one make make the division, and you'll have have a voltage divider that divides it. Will how much voltage will go into the oscilloscope? So in in the theory of a ten meg ohm. One, you would have to have a five, a fifty meg ohm on top, a twelve point five meg ohm on the bottom. Fifty meg ohm one, I found out that 
they don't make it. It's very rare to find it. It's expensive. And also, it's pretty big. It's probably going to be about that big. And think you can fit money made up that big. They're tall. We just think, think about fitting that in your pen. You wouldn't be able to fit that in at all. What you have to probably have to do is you probably have to cut part of the cord off. Probably get a metal box or so, a tiny metal box and solder it on there together to make sure it so keeps the RF out and then probably have to put the resistor on there. You could probably do it though. I'm not for sure if it'll be actually working where the oscilloscope can actually measure stuff because it might be a limit on how much minimum current that goes into the oscilloscope that causes its voltage to read it. What the voltage you'll have to read in order for this the current of the current of the voltage that it's trying to read, how big it has to be. Cause the 15 bag, that's pretty big. That's almost insulator like resistance. And And that's how it's gonna, gonna work. I don't know. Do they make, I think they do a Tektronic. They might have a 10 bag or own repeatance one. I think they do. There's, there's some that are 10 bag and there's some that are 1 bag. Mine's a 1 bag scope of, luckily, that I could do this with, without having to try to use a 50 bag and a 12.5 bag. And who knows, if you don't want to try to shove it in the pen, maybe get a, get a metal box on it cause, uh, and cut between the cord there and then put in a little tiny circuit board. You, you could probably, I don't know, the electronics, do they sell a metal box that's that tiny? They do sell metal boxes, but I think the metal boxes are pretty big. If they had a tiny metal box, you could probably go, I remember this one time when I was building, uh, RCL meter for the sound card of the computer. I went and bought this Cubs. It's a baseball, you know, baseball Cubs thing that is, that keeps the, the use for throwing the uh, baseball cards in. It's a metal tin. I used to use that there to shield that that circuit with. I don't know if I needed to shield it or not, but that's what I used to shield it with. It did work too. Well, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you build it. So thanks for watching. Hope you like it.